Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning I'm coming with scripture from Psalms 51, verses 1 through 5. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Yes. Against thee, thee only, I have I sinned and done the evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I have I was shaped in iniquity and yes. in sin did my mother conceive me. Yes. I read you Psalms 50, 51, verses 1 through 5. Yes. Amen. I want to bless his name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Thank yes, you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Angels bow before me. Yes, yes. Heaven earth for dawn, oh God. What a yes. mighty God we yes. serve. Yes, yes, Lord. Oh, Father God, I come to you, oh God, humble as I know how. Yes, yes. Lord, we come right now to give you thanks and give you praise, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. But Father God, we praise you, oh God, because yes. you woke us up early this yes. morning, yes. oh God. Yes. You allowed us to be above ground and not thank under the you, ground, oh God. Lord. And Father God, we thank you for your grace thank and mercy you, that kept us all through the night, oh God. But Father God, we know if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be, oh God? But Father God, we'll be like a ship without a sail. Everything we do will fail, oh God. But Father God, we come right now asking you for your forgiveness, oh God. Ask you right now to see your mercy upon us, oh God. Heal, oh God, and set free, oh God. Break, oh God. Bind down, oh God. Oh God, cast all the enemies away, oh God. Father God, tear them down, oh God. But Father God, our chains are gone, oh God. We have been set free, oh God. But Father God, I pray you. Y'all listening to me? It was a planned thing to get our attention. Amen. I don't know about you, but God has gotten my attention. Amen. There's still yet more that I need to do. Amen. But you've got to be accountable for yourself. You got to know what God has been saying. Amen. In this pandemic, I also want to share with you that it's not over. Come on. Somebody say it's not over. It's not over. Uh uh. It's not over. You need to watch what's happening. Amen. According to the signs of time. There are places, uh, Texas, there's a shortage on food. Anybody seen that in the news? Yes. Anybody seen where you have uh, the, the docks uh, are, are full of boats that are trying to bring us goods from overseas, the things that we eat? And I remember, amen, I remember uh, years ago, people were saying we needed to learn how to grow our own food. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yes. Somebody going to be in trouble if they want some string beans. Because they used to get them in a can. <laughs> Somebody going to be in trouble if they want some greens because they used to get them in a can too. Yes. I, I don't do that. But listen, 
We got to learn, amen, our tomatoes, our cucumbers, our everything. Y'all, God is taking us back to the basics. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just here to warn you as a prophet, yeah. amen, yeah. and let you know that you need to hear what the Lord is saying in this hour, amen, because he's sending us the signs. Does it mean that he's returning right now? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that we got to return back to him. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. We got to return back to him the right way. Yeah. And that doesn't mean we go religious, amen. amen. It really means that we're going to have more freedom if you do it right. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 We're going to be free if we do it right. Amen. And we do it by grace. And we got to have ears to hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. 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 Next Sunday, on that note, Next Sunday is Millennial Sunday. Can I get a hand and an amen on that? Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Our millennials are going to be in charge of the service, and uh, we want you to tune in. <laughs> we don't know how it's going to go, but it's going to be a Millennial Sunday. Amen. I know it won't be a usual thing. Amen. But we're going to let the uh, millennials of our church have their way through Jesus. Amen. 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 I also want to remind you right here, ways to give. Amen. Can we give a praise for giving? Amen. amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 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 And so uh, we want to remind you, uh, don't be sad. We should be happy on payday. Can I just teach you for a moment? Amen. amen. Some people are always complaining. This has been my thankful. I've been through some devotions. And this has been my thankful month, my thankfulness, uh, and in that devotion, it was talking about, you know, how the, the Bible teaches us that we should not be always complaining. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and Paul said that in any given situation, amen, he said that he going to survive, and he going to praise God, but some of us have a tendency to complain, yeah. amen, if you get paid, yeah. I don't care if it ain't for two dollars, yeah. amen, you ought to tell God thank you, amen. I remember when I was getting paid only $5 and $56 a month. Don't play with me here. And I was excited to have that. I remember when my salary was $3,000 a year. Amen. And I had a car. I had an apartment. My baby had uh, clothes. And y'all, God was so good to me, I was able to help my mama and some sisters. Y'all are listening to me. You know why? Because I obeyed God. The amount of money never determined my obedience to God. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. My amount of money never determined me obeying God and giving 10%. Yes. And it never determined me giving him an offering. And that doesn't always mean in money, but it doesn't exclude money either. Amen? Amen. amen. That also means, amen, of your service. And if you don't have a dime, which most people are not telling the truth because you got a dime. If you go count them pennies, yeah. you got a dime. Yeah. So give the dime. Give the widow's might and see won't God bless you even more. Yeah. Amen, amen. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm, I'm going to stay right here for a moment and minister to somebody who decided that they did not need to pay tithe and offering because of the amount of money that they are receiving. Don't you know that you haven't gotten an increase because of your disobedience? Yeah. The Bible says those who obey him do what? They eat the good of the land. Yeah. And if you give much, you get much. Yes, sir. But if you give sparingly, you get sparingly. And so everything has an order when it comes to God. I know we don't like order. But everything has an order when it comes to God. If you want to be blessed, then do what God tells you or commands us to do. And I've never run out. I went from $3,000 a year, obey God, to $7,000. I'm talking about I'm a single parent. Y'all ain't hear me, though. Yeah. I got a testimony. And even though I was up in school, y'all, I sent my tithe back to the church because yeah. I started tithing when I was a little girl off a of Social Security check for $56 a month. Y'all don't listen to me. Yeah. I've never been without, and God has always made a way. Yeah. And I went from $7,000 to $12,400 a year. You just kept growing me, amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went from $12,400 a year 
to a $45,000. He just jumped me way on up there. Amen. Amen. When it showed up, it looked like the cupboard would bear for me and Pastor Jerome. Amen. Amen. And went right from there to $45,000 a year. And now there's no cap on the money that I can make. Amen. God, come on, God. Come on. Give God some glory in this place. Amen. Because I believe God for a million. Anybody believe God for a million a year? Y'all better start believing God. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Come on. Give God some glory. As we sing our next song. Amen. And, and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, don't y'all stop. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank How many know that if God be for you, then no one can be against you? Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Meaning that whatever circumstances, whatever obstacle you go through in life, you will never be defeated. Amen.
Some of you that are here and some of you that are watching, amen, you, you know they're singing real good, amen. Amen. Y'all be clapping your hands, amen. Y'all be shaking up your iPhone, your, your, your Chromebook, amen, your iPad, amen. Telling the Lord, thank you, amen. Amen. Some of us are good shower singers, amen. But we, we're not good mic singers, amen. So we just thank God for having some good mic singers, amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. We do honor the Lord today. We honor our, our wife and our supporter. Amen. Our co worker in the ministry. Amen. And to all of you <clears throat> that are here today, we thank God for you. And we thank God that you will continually to be a supporter, to be a yes. believer, and to be faithful yes. unto the Lord. Amen. Because he is truly faithful to us. Yes. Even when we don't do our part, he's still he's faithful towards us. Amen. Because he did not allow the thing that should have happened to us happen. His grace and his mercy is still sufficient in such a time as this. Amen. We're going to move on and uh, teach a little bit this morning from the book of uh, Proverbs, if you don't mind, amen. Proverbs, uh, the third chapter, and we're going to read verses one through six while you're turning. I want to say welcome to our virtual listeners this morning, uh, those of you that are in other places other than right here in Monticello. We pray that if you're in Monticello, you just, you're getting in your car right now and you're ready to pull up at any time, amen. <laughs> But if you're out of town, amen, we thank God for you for tuning in, amen. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you that this word would be a blessing. It would be a life-living message. It would be something, God, that would call someone to, to live longer and run stronger. We ask, God, that you would give to us, not our words, but the words you would have us to teach on, God. We thank you in advance that lives would be changed and hearts would be molded. And not letting people with God will become lively stones. We thank you right now, and we ask that you would open up our hearts that we may be a blessing and a spokesperson for you. It's in you we live, move, and have our being. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. We want to read here from uh, Proverbs, the third chapter, verses one through six. It says, My son, do not forget. This is the Amplified Version. Do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of days in your years of life worth living are tranquility and prosperity wholesome to the blessings or life blessings. They will add to you. Do not let mercy and kindness and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Bind them securely around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So find, so find favor and high esteem in the God, in the sight of God and man. Excuse me. Goes on to say, trust in, rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. I believe I'll read it again. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. I believe I'll read that again. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Verse 6 says it this way. It says, now in all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth. Now get this. Removing obstacles. That block your way. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Removing all obstacles. 
that block your way. That sixth verse. And if you would allow me to, I want to use C.C. Winings okay. words. Yeah. And her words are simply believe That's it. for That's you. it. That's wow. it. I love it. That's it. Believe That's it. for you. That's it. Her words say something like this. They say that mountains can't be moved. Come on, Pastor. They say that these chains will never break. Come on now. But they don't know you like we do. <laughs> there is power yes, in your name. Yes. She goes on to say, we've heard that there is no way through. Yeah. We've heard the tide will never change. Yeah. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your names. Then she says, move the impossible, the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. Yes, sir. God, we believe for it. Yes, sir. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, not only do we believe, but God, we yeah. believe for it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe Hallelujah. for it. Yeah. Believe for it. Yes. Whatever it is that it is in your life, believe God for it. Solomon, one of the most credible people in the Bible that kind of lived his life like so many of us live our lives. Got to the end of his road, got to the end of his life, but left some wholesome directions. Amen. He got to the point of his life where all the things that he had achieved all the things that he thought that he needed to be whole and wholesome and all of the things that he felt like that were life and things that led to lifelessness or life, a better life, let me say it that way, did not really mean much at all. He, he had become old. He was successful as a king and he had tried and done many things. Now, all this that he had done, he says, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. That's it right there. For this is the whole duty That's it. of man. That's it. He goes on and says, For God will bring every deed into judgment, Come on now. including the hidden things, yes. whether it be good or whether it be evil. Solomon said that he spent most of his time doing the things that we do. Amen. No, I, ain't, I ain't gonna hurt you much. I gotta hurt myself if I hurt you, right? Wow. He, over in Ecclesiastes, Solomon talks about the four areas of life that he pursued. I want you to get he pursued. Which are some of the same areas that we today pursue. Amen. Just, just work with me a little bit. I ain't, I'm not going to work too long. Solomon, um, some scholar says that he, his story is pretty depressing. And it shows that uh, our life are just brief. And that it 
goes, it comes and goes so quickly that we really forget why we are here or we never pursue why we are here. Some of us, like Solomon, does it so wrongly. We invest all of our times and all of our efforts into what Solomon did. Solomon put, uh, invested a lot of times in four areas. The first area I want to mention to you is pleasure. Wow. Somebody ought to say pleasure. Pleasure. Solomon. <laughs> yes, sir. Solomon didn't miss nothing. History says that Solomon had 700 wives. 700, not 70, 700. He ain't miss nothing. I don't know what the rest of them had, but he had 700. Not including 300 concubines. 700 plus 300 is 1,000. Somebody ought to say, I don't know how he did it. I don't know what he was doing, what he was doing, but I don't know how he did it. One, somebody will say just one, 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 just one. Lord help us, just one, just, just one man. It's hard to please. Y'all better talk back to me. Just, just one sometimes is hard to deal with. Just, just, just one man is just, it's just enough to take care of his needs, his desires, his wants. I'm talking about the men. We got too many women and someone talk about the men. Yes, but Solomon had 700 wives, 300 concubines. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, sir. Solomon said, I didn't miss no pleasure. <laughs> if I saw her and I wanted her, I got her. Look at that. Hmm? Uh, uh, uh. No matter whom she had or whom she desired, if I desired her because of my position in life, I had her. Amen. So it is today. People in society, they run after the pleasures of life. Thinking that the pleasures of life will satisfy them. Hmm? Yeah. They seek out every form of entertainment. Uh, the best foods. The best wines. Yeah. Yes. The best clothes. Yeah. The best cars. Yeah. The best of this. The best of that. Thinking that that will satisfy yeah. them. Yeah. Hmm? But all it does is leaves most people wanting more. That's right. That's right. Hmm? That's right. The next. That's right. The next. That's right. The next. That's it. Until they get to the point where they find out that those things were not fulfilling. Actually, they were meaningless. So Solomon writes later. Over in Ecclesiastes, he says, it's good to enjoy life. And I believe God wants us to have a wholesome life. But we must never allow our lives to be consumed with unstable or unstable desires for more pleasure. Well, mm. Just a little bit. More. Yes. Then the other thing that, that Solomon struggled with and we do today is knowledge. Mm. Mm. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Knowledge is good. Yes. The pursuit of knowledge is good. Uh -huh. But some folk can know too much for their own good. Yes. Mm? Uh, you ever had so much stuff on your resume and go try to get a job yeah. and the only reason they can tell you they didn't give you the job yeah. is because you over qualified. Yeah. Yeah. That's almost insulting, isn't it? Yeah. 
It's almost like you spent all your time doing all that and you can't do anything with it. Overqualified. Some of the greatest scholars and some of the greatest learners or some of the greatest people are highly qualified and highly knowledgeable people that really have this knowledge for the wrong reason. They want to have this knowledge so they can assume or so they can present themselves better, smarter than others. They obtain these things for no good reason. Amen? But they don't have the knowledge of knowing that to fear the Lord is the most important knowledge that you can have. Mm. Just like pleasures, knowledge is and could be a good thing, but in fact, most of it is obtained for the wrong reason. I even found out that Christians, uh, when, I, when I did some research, Harvard and Yale was actually or are actually two of the most prestigious schools that, that, that you can go to. And these schools were actually founded by the Christian community. And they was founded by the Christian community at first to make people more knowledgeable about the Lord. Huh? But look how they have turned now. Amen. If you are not at a certain educational knowledge or have certain scores or have certain people backing you or have a terrific background, most of these schools you cannot even get into. Amen. They're not, you cannot even get into it. Once upon a time, if you were a graduate of one of those universities, you could just about assume that you would be in a prestigious position. Amen. Just by being a graduate or being a scholar or being someone that has a degree from one of those universities. Solomon says here that wisdom he says, for a wise man, like a fool, most people will not even remember you after you've gone. All that wisdom and all those degrees and all that knowledge that you have obtained, for most, you will not even be remembered for it. And he goes on to say that most times as you age, you will forget most of the stuff that you have already learned. He called it sometimes. Alzheimer's. And you will die not remembering all the stuff that you've learned. Don't get me wrong, knowledge is good in its place. And then he dealt with work. Might ought to say work. Work, work. Solomon expresses how he poured himself out into his work. History shows that he was a master builder. He built a temple. He built a marvelous temple. A temple for that time was outstanding. It was a fortress. He built temples in places that he conquered. He conquered nations and everywhere he conquered, he built uh, masterpieces. History says in one place that he conquered, he built a stable for 1,000 horses and chariots. That's equivalent to us building this big garage for all of our cars and all of our toys and all of our things that we obtain in life. Uh, that was to his standards then it was 
brilliant. It was successful. But what Solomon was doing, he was not building God's kingdom. He was building his kingdom. He was building his own kingdom. A kingdom that would not last. A kingdom that was only important to him. A kingdom that was only to show recognition to what he had accomplished. Or what he had done. Later on, he writes, I hate all the things. I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them. <laughs> he said, I got to leave those things to the people that come after me. <laughs> Cousins, uncles, relatives, and all those people that will come in position or come in my lineage. Huh? And cause intense worry, toil, fighting, animosity amongst the family. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. All that stuff that we have and we accumulate when we leave this place. Boy, that's when the fight starts. Right. Mama said I had, could have this. Huh? Danny said I could have that. Sure did. Huh? Yeah. But he loved me and he would want me yeah. to have this. Wow. Y'all, 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 y'all didn't hear what Solomon's saying this morning. Yeah. Talk about it. Amen. Amen. He says while he was alive, he had control over that stuff. Yes. But when he died. He had has no control over everything that he had worked for and poured his heart into. Uh, one last thing, then we'll get on. Money wow. is the fourth thing. Solomon had more money than anyone who had ever lived. Whew. That means he was the richest man in his time. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says money is not a bad thing, but the love of money itself is. Yes. In fact, uh, the Bible says money answering all things. Money can be used for good, to do a lot of good, but money most times become the chief competitor to our heart. Heart. Because the heart is never satisfied. Yeah. Hmm? You ever heard someone say, I have enough money? And it causes them to worry about Protecting the money, wow, that's about hiding the money, mm -hmm. about who gonna take their money, yes. about who got their money, mm -hmm. about who gonna get their money. Yes. So it, what it does is it causes the heart to become competitive mm -hmm. yeah. with God because the trust is not in the Lord, the trust is in the money. They, they, they check their stocks daily, momently. Uh, they check their bank accounts all the time. If it's a penny off, or if it's a dime off, they, 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 they do all their time. They're consumed with the flow of money and not with the directions and the trust that they have in the Lord. Yes. Wow. So yeah. Solomon says, uh, there's another evil under the sun. And it weighs heavily on men. Yeah. God gives men wealth, possessions, and honor so that he lacks nothing his heart desires. Wow. Hmm? Yeah. But God does not enable him to enjoy 
them as a stranger enjoys them instead. He says that this is meaningless and grievous. You can only take you when you leave this earth. Everything else is temporary. It's temporary. So, believing for it requires us to have directions from the Lord. Amen? If we're going to believe God, for him directing our paths. He says here in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. I was trying to. Go on my phone and get directions one day. And one of the things I've learned is that. If you go on your phone computer or whatever device you use and you're trying to get directions from point A to point B, it's first going to ask for your destiny. It's going to ask for your location. If you never put the destination in, it will never give you the information that you need to get to where you're going. Say amen. Your app or your maps or whatever it is that you choose in life to get from point A to point B only is appropriate if you have a destiny or destination. If you don't know where you're going, what will happen is you will go places, do things, get involved in things. Take wrong paths, meander, linger, take the wrong routes, take wrong roads. In other words, you'll waste a lot of time wondering if you do not acknowledge God. Yeah. Only God knows where, when, and how to get you where you need to be in life. He knows what you need because he made you. He knows what you like because he made you. He knows what you desire because he made you. He knows what hurts you. He knows what makes you happy. God knows how, when, and where to position you. He knows who to send you away. See, you won't even know who to trust to marry if you don't acknowledge him. You find yourself marrying all the wrong people for all the wrong reasons. And it'd be a continual cycle because you did not acknowledge him first. You'll find yourself like Solomon. You'll be pursuing all the things that you want in life versus all the things that God wants in life yeah. believe for it yeah. acknowledge the Lord in all your ways yeah. all your ways for the things that you need the little things yeah. the things that you have need of the little things the things that you want the little things some of us forget that life is two paths. There's two paths. And what happens is when you choose those two paths, you have a right and a wrong, when you are faced with those, those two paths, it's very easy to make the wrong decision. Because most of us operate in the uncertainty. Come on, y'all can talk back to him. I ain't doing that bad. Yeah, and the uncertainty because we cannot, we can say what the outcome is going to be. Amen. Yeah. We can put all the ingredients. Let me talk to these women in here for a minute. I know we got some cookers. We can put all the ingredients together to make a cake. Yeah. Well. But we can't determine 
how that cake is going to turn out. Although you put all the right, you do it all the right way. And all it takes is one temperature or one degree or one something to happen in the oven. Or, 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 or worse than that, you can get some, some ingredients that's, that's, that's outdated. Huh? And that cake that, that you've done forever that turned out the right way, this day, it did not turn out right. Some people have it even said, I, I work with a lady that, that cooks cake cakes and she wins all the fair stuff. And she said, it never turns out the same way twice. Never. And she said, I do it the same way every time, but it never turns out the same way ever. Amen. Now, if that's an uncertainty, if that's us doing things consistently the same manner and it don't turn out, what do you happen in life as you move through life? As you date people? As you take jobs? As you spend your money? As you do things without consulting the Lord? That's it. That's it. Directions matter. Come on, preacher. They matter. And knowing your intended destination uh -huh. matters. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. With the help of God, your life can be better and more consistent than it will without Him. That's right. Hmm? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Solomon found it worthy to trust God. Uh -huh. After he had Done all those things. Been all those things. Got, uh, accumulated all those things. He found out it was better to trust God and to have God directions than it was to accomplish all the things that he had accomplished in life. Hmm? Yeah. Solomon said he put trust in God over his money. Uh -huh. Over his desire over everything that he thought that he needed to be fulfilled in life. Yeah. So trust here symbolizes, and I want y'all to get this, mm -hmm. trust here symbolizes, uh, let me just explain. It symbolizes a conquered General well. falling to his knees, presenting his sword uh -huh. to the colonel or to the person that was over the army that defeated him. Mm -hmm. That means he surrendered. Another expression of it is a trust here symbolizes a person. Uh, being face down, begging for forgiveness. It also symbolizes a child that's totally dependent on its mother for everything. That's what trust symbolizes. Trust symbolizing that we come to the point that we are totally dependent on God. And we could not survive without God. Amen? Amen? That we have to lean totally on him. One of the, uh, the, 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 the people or one of the theologians says that trusting God is to be unbottomed of yourself. And every circumstance in life and to lean upon God and it goes on and says if you don't lean on him you sink it you drown you can't breathe you can't do nothing without him that's when that's the kind of trust that we have to have in God without God I can't breathe 
Without God, I can't move. Without God, I can't see. Without God, I can't stand. Without God, I can't speak. In other words, without God, I'm nothing. Yes, sir. Believe for it. Believe God for it. So he says, lean not to your own understanding. Hmm? It's kind of like having a, a broken bone or a broken part of your body that does not work anymore. So when you don't lean on to God, you trust in the crutch. You trust in the walker. You trust in everything else because you don't trust that you're able to stand anymore by yourself. Mm. So you need something to depend on. Huh? Yes, sir. We are broken. We're broken and we don't know we're broken. Yes, sir. But the thing that we should be the leaning on is not who we choose to lean on. Isn't it ironic that we will trust Someone that we know ain't no good. <laughs> Y'all be yes. awful quiet in here. You know they ain't dependable. Because they've proven they're not dependable. That's it. Yes, That's it. Had you wait out in the store for 30 minutes when they said they'll be there in a minute? Huh? <laughs> I'm bringing the milk and the milk done spoiled four times and they ain't showed up yet. Or let's, let's do the worst scenario. I'm going to pick you up in the morning and say, I got you late. You done lost your job because they won't come on time. But we still trust them. Mm. Broken crutches. <laughs> Can't depend on them. But you are so faithful to them. But they do not reciprocate that same Faithfulness. God is faithful. And all he wants to do is to lead us and to guide us and to direct our paths. Amen. Don't use or don't lean on your own understanding. He says, now in all your ways acknowledge him. Who is him? He's the Lord. Trust God with all your heart. Yes. That just basically means to give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. We owe him so much. Actually, we cannot repay him for the things that he's already done. Yes. He's done marvelous things. Yes, sir. He sent his son. He sent his only begotten son that we may have life. Y'all get that? That we may have life and life more abundantly. So God intends to us to live life to the fullest under his direction. Yes, <laughs> under his roadmap. Under his guidance. Under his conditions. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So we need the presence of God in our lives regularly. In order to build up trust, to trust him in the mediocre things of life. The things that we think that we just go through carelessly or wondrously. We need him every day in our lives. For says he will direct your path. When we trust him, when we allow him to become the mother, the father, the guide, the roadmap, the atlas of whatever it is that we need for our directions, he'll direct our paths. See, what I found out is that people have the don't let go syndrome. The don't let go of their own ways. Don't let go of their own heart. So with the heart, the script says confession is made. Hmm? Some people's hearts are messed up. Some people's hearts have been broken so many times. Some people's hearts are so hard. So they have this wall built up in trusting man. In trusting woman. In trusting anything that's not 
themselves. Even at the cost of knowing that they're not trustworthy themselves. Yeah. Ah, somebody ought to say, well, how you know? Because the scripture says, every time I desire to do good. Yes, sir. <laughs> Evil. Yeah, it's right there with you. Yeah. you. You really can't trust yourself. Because any given day, yes. any given moment, yes. any given circumstance, you can get out of character. Yes. The most saved person can get out of character. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. The most unholy person can get out of character. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anybody, any given time can get out of character. Yeah. But yet we fail because of our hearts have not been totally giving to the Lord. We fail to trust him. So therefore, our paths are curvy. Our paths are up. Our paths are down. Our paths are left. Our paths are right. We need to get on the straight and narrow. Yes, sir. Hmm? We have to decide to allow God to direct our paths. Amen. He, he says, I'm not a robber. I'm not a thief. You don't have to choose me. Hmm? Yes, sir. Just like you chose to do the other things that you choose to do. Yes, sir. You want to choose to trust me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I made you fearfully and wonderfully, but you have some flaws. I may not come when you want me to come. I may allow you to endure like a good soldier. Yeah. I may allow some things to come up on you. Yeah. I may allow you to go through some stuff. Yeah. I, may allow, I may allow some things to happen in your life. But I am with you even until the end of time. I, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're going to have to suffer a while with me. Yeah. You're going to have to go through some stuff with me. And it's better to go through with me than without me. Yeah. Hmm? Because the scripture says if you keep your mind on me while you're in your mess. If you keep your mind on me while you're at your worst. If you keep the mind on me while everybody hating on you. If you keep the mind on me while you ain't got this or while you ain't got that. If you keep your mind on me when you're about to lose your mind up in here. Up in here. Up in here, Shaniqua. I'll keep you in perfect peace. But you got to keep your mind staying on me. Trust me. Trust me. I, I know it hurt. I know it's heavy. I know it's, it's, it's like I'm the only one through, but trust me, amen. If you trust me, you'll find out that you're on the path all the time. Yes. Hmm? I will allow you to go through this not for you, but that others may see the God in you. Woo, isn't that amazing that God uses you to help others? You're trying to figure out what path you're on. You're trying to figure out why you're going through what you're going through. But you're going through what you're going through. So others may see that you came through. Yeah. So they will come too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Come to their right mind. Yeah. yeah. Come to their senses. Come, on, come to the knowledge of knowing that there is yeah. none greater. Yeah. Yes. And can't nobody yes. Yes. do me like the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Can't nobody save me. Can't nobody deliver me. Can't nobody hold me. Can't nobody move. Can't nobody. Ain't nobody going to do you like the Lord. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care how what they give you. I don't care what they present to you. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. He'll direct your paths if you'll give him your heart. Hmm? You got to decide to let the Lord overtake you. Hmm? And not lean to your own understanding. But trust in the Lord. Not only in the Lord, but trust in the revealed word of the Lord. Hmm? Decide in your mind. Acknowledge him in your mind that he is not going to withhold no good thing from you. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Yeah. He can say one word. One word. There's one word in this book. One word in that Bible that can change your
your situation. Yes. One word in the Bible that can elevate your, your down days. Yes. One word in the Bible. And that word is Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. If you, if you don't know no other word, you ought to learn the word Jesus. Yes. Not just Jesus, but Mary's baby Jesus. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, Jesus paid the price. He provides us with the knowledge of knowing that we should honor God in all we do. Hmm? Because we honor him, we show that we trust him. And we show that we trust him, God will direct our path. See, see he ain't going to direct nothing if you don't trust him. You ever, you ever put something in your GPS? And it keep taking it around in circles. Yes. So do. Yes. And sometimes you just turn it off yes. and pull over. Yes. Hey man, how you get to so and so? This thing ain't working for. Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. You, you don't. You, you lose trust in it. Yes. But what about God? Why do we lose trust in God? Yes. He's never done anything apart from what He said He was going to do. That's it. That's it. Hmm? Yeah, that's it. He, he, he's not going to change midstream. Everything that you will encounter, everything that you're going to encounter, everything you're going to go through, he's already spoken. Yeah. He's told you that you're going to have some days. Y'all yes, yeah. hear me? He, he even said that all sickness if he said all oh, sickness is unto death, he's telling you you're probably going to do what? You're going to get sick. Yes, sir. Huh? But he also says that, that, that by his stripes, you are healed. you're healed. Yes, thank you, Lord. He's a mind regulator. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's a peace giver. Yes, sir. He said, he, he, he slips off for people that's, that's trying to obtain rich. He said, he says, give unto me good measures. Press down. Shaking. Oh, if you just if you just pay, if you just give me what I deserve, I will cause men yeah. to give to you. Yes. Huh? I'm gonna call what men? I'm gonna cause your boss to call you in all of a sudden. And say, I've been watching you. You've been faithful. You've been dependable. I think you need a raise. Yeah. Yeah. I think you need a raise. Not only raise, I think you need to be over everybody in here. Even in the kingdom, the Bible talks about the least doing it to the least of them. He says that in the end, in the end, the last, everybody that was looked over, everybody that was stepped over, everybody that was talked about, everybody that thought wasn't going to be nothing. In the end, guess what? They're going to be at the front of the line. The last is going to be first. Yes, sir. Hmm? That's when you have to allow God to direct your path. Yeah. And acknowledge him. Because with him on our side, we cannot lose. Yeah. Believe for it. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. By the leading of God and the Holy Spirit, it shows us that glorifying God yeah. through our circumstances through our situations, through our ups and downs, that God has always been there. And I'm finished. He's always been there. So you can be like C.C. Wines. You can say those words. Huh? I, 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 I don't know what other way to tell you. I don't know what else to give you. But she said it so plainly. Move the immovables. Break the unbreakables. God, I believe. Anybody believe God today? Yes. I believe for it. Yes. Anybody believe for anything today? Yes. Anybody sick and tired of going around in circles? Anybody tired of just the same old routine? Is there anyone tired of waking up to the I don't want to get up? 
Is there anyone tired of just not knowing where you're going? Hmm? I want to introduce you today to, to someone that's already been there. Already done that. He can't move the impossibles. If you would commit your ways to him, acknowledge him in everything. Somebody ought to say everything. Everything. Everything you do. He shall. He will direct you. If you're looking for directions today, and I'm done, I recommend Jesus. Where you are in life right now is just a part of your path. The things that you endured up to this point are just a part of your path. And I found out that when God says, I'll stick closer to you than a brother, there's nothing like going through a circumstance or a situation and not having a physical brother or a physical sister. Maybe they're not gone, but maybe they're not at the faith level that you're at. There's some things that you, myself, and others that have encountered that you can't even talk about them to your family. But you can talk about them to the Lord. There's some things that you are in doing right now. There's some places that you are contemplating going right now. That only God can ease your mind about. Only God can ease your heart about. And God knows. Are y'all hearing me? God knows you so right well. I think that's how the scripture says it. He knows you so right well. That he, 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 he says this. He said, although you feel broken, although you feel busted, although it feels like your heart and your mind is being torn apart, if you endure this thing in this season, if you don't quit in this season, I'll bring you out. He said, endure like a good soldier. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he goes on to say that I've opened doors. I've changed things. I've made an escape. I made a way out that's tailor made for you. But you gotta acknowledge me. Lord, Lord, what, what's next? What's my next move? What's my next thing? Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? Should I move here or should I move there? Should I open my mouth or should I close my mouth? Should I sit or should I stay? God, I won't move without you. Because if I move, can I talk to the young folks? Like you move. Somebody said just like that. <laughs> I know y'all know this song. All y'all ain't listening to Christian songs up in there. All they should be. But they're not, they not listening to all. You got to move like God moves. Where he has set in place for you, I can't travel. Where he set in place for you, she can't travel. Your path, your direction, your destiny is just all about not you but all about you showing people that you trust God trust him trust him and what I like about this thing is that he, he said I ain't gonna let too much happen to you I'm not gonna put you in a situation where you just have a downright uh, three year old tantrum unless you choose to. He said, I put some stuff in you. I poured some stuff in you that made you different. I made you in my image and in my likeness. If 
you'll just let me walk you through this thing, let me help you through this thing, you're going to come out better than you were before. God bless you today. Believe for it. Believe God for it. Whatever it is that you have needs before the Lord. Come on, stand with me. Whatever you have need of before the Lord. Just close your eyes up for a minute. We ain't gonna rob you. The Bible says, think on these things. Think on these things. Whatever is pure. Whatever is right. Whatever it is that God said pertaining to your life. Think on these things. And then once you take on these things, surrender them to the Lord. You may be going through a tough time. You may be going through a difficult time. You may be going through a different time. Trust the Lord. Just, 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 you got to act like you're releasing a balloon or something. Act like you're throwing something away. Just toss it. Just toss it out your mind. And for this next two or three minutes, I ain't going to say two or three minutes because I don't believe I can get two or three minutes out of it. I'm trusting God. For the next 30 seconds, can you just begin to thank God? Just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him. Come on, open up your mouth and, and, and out of your mouth, out of your belly, just begin to thank God. Thank him for things being as well as they are. Thank him for life. Thank him for drying up tears. Thank him for the healing of your mind, body, and spirit. Thank him for being a comforter. Thank him for being a keeper. Thank him for being your calmness in the middle of your storms. Thank him for comforting you when there was no one else to speak kindness. There was no one else to speak goodness. There was no one else to pat you on your back. There was no one else to encourage you. Thank him for showing you that he still loves you. Thank him for showing you that he still forgives you. Thank him for giving unto you. Thank him for blessing you. Thank him for waking you. Thank him for him. Ah, still giving you another opportunity. Thank you for him still being God and watching over you. Thank you for him being God. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He wants to hear from you today. Thank you. Thank you. He wants to hear from you. This may be the last time that, that you really have to thank him. Ah, you might not have another opportunity, but while this blood is, is flowing in you, while you're in your right mind, and while you're still able to think, while you're still able to speak, while you're still able to raise your hand, while you're still able to give him glory, tell him how good he's been. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's been mighty good. Don't be afraid, don't worry about what the next person is thinking, but you owe God something. You owe God just a, a prayer of praise and a, a hand clap. You owe him so much that you can't repay him with the hand clap. You can't repay him with the voice, but such as you have, give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Believe for it. Believe for it. Now thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for things being as well as they are. Never would have made it. Uh, God, I would have laid down and laid there and just laid on and went on to sleep and never woke up again. But thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your peace. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a reason to run on. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. There's none like you. There will be none after you. God, we humble ourselves in your presence. And we invite you into our hearts. God, we don't want to harden our hearts, but we want to surrender our hearts to you today. God, do what you will. Mold and make us. Uh, we're in your hands. We're in your hands, oh God. Oh God, you move us the way that we need to move. 
God will be careful to give you the praise. Careful to give you the glory. Because God, we know God that you're worthy. You're worthy of the praise, of the honor. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you today. We thank God for you this morning for tuning in. Amen. I believe she's already uh, allowed space to tell you how you can give, how you can be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for giving and being a blessing, amen, to the ministry. And we're believing, God, that 2022, Somebody say 2022. 2022. That's going to be a move of God. First in us. And then secondly, out of here. Anybody want to believe God for that? It's going to be first in us. And then it's going to be out of here. Amen. 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 I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that when we grow, he's going to put us in a place for growth. Amen. Amen. Somebody don't tell the Lord to enlarge Amen. our territory. Yes, sir. You got people that depending on you. Yes, sir. You got some unsaved folk that's watching you. You got some people that are waiting for an opportunity not to come to church, but an opportunity to come to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's not be too anxious about telling folk to come to church. Yes, sir. Tell folk to let the church come into them. Yes, sir. And when the church get in them, their hearts gonna change. Yes, sir. The places they going are gonna change. Yes, sir. And they'll come to church. Amen. So just begin to tell the people about the goodness of the Lord. Not only tell them, but show them how good God has been to you. Let them know that God is still trustworthy. And God is still faithful. Even though, even though, and you can add whatever, even though, add whatever, even though God is still faithful. Because you know, that's the counter to what God has not done. To God, what God will not do. That's the counter, even though. I'm going to trust you. Hallelujah. God bless you. May God keep you. Are there any other announcements today? Anything person? Uh, what did you say next Sunday was? Is that next Sunday? Millennial Sunday. Hmm? Oh, oh, Lord. Amen. GP <laughs> will be bringing us Inspiration on next Sunday. Amen. I don't know what the other young folk gonna do. What you gonna do? Anthony? Shaniqua? Hey, y'all are free. It'll come to you, right? Amen. Hey, it'll come to them. Amen. I'm sure y'all are working on it. Amen. Invite some of your friends. Amen. Invite your friends. And your enemies. Don't leave them out. Them the ones you really want to come to church. The folk you know don't like you, it's next time you say, Having some millennial service. Would you come up and be a part of it? Amen. Yeah. Amen. You'll be surprised. God bless you, is our prayer. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be with you as we depart one from another, but never from his presence. It is our prayer. And the people of God said, Amen, amen. and amen. amen. God bless you.